Magandang araw. My name is Teacher Glenn and welcome to another discussion of number theory. This is modular arithmetic. I have two objectives for this video. The first one is to define congruence in modular arithmetic and to use properties of congruence in solving modular arithmetic. So let's start. By definition, let A, B, M be integers where m is greater than 0, meaning m is always positive, while a and b can be both positive and negative values. We can say that integer a is congruent to integer b modulo m, denoted by this expression, such that m now divides a minus b. Here is an example. So if we have 5 congruent to 2 mod 3, this could be written as 3 divides 5 minus 2, or 3 divides 3, because 5 minus 2 is equal to 3. We have another one, 13 is congruent to negative 7, modulo 4. This can be written as 4 divides 13 minus negative 7, because 13 minus negative 7 is 20, and that is the same as 4 divides 20. Let's take a closer look at the first example. We have 5 congruent to modulo 3. If we pull up the number line, we can say that 5 is located here and 2 is located there. Now, 2 and 5 are distinct numbers. They are not actually equal and they're different. However, in the world of modulo 3, this number line now will be divided into three values only. We have 0, 1, and 2. Same if we have modulo 2, this number line would be categorized into two numbers, 0 and 1. Same again if we have modulo 4, this number line will be categorized into four values only. So looking at the pattern, the highest number is always one less than the value of the modulo. So if we have a higher value, say 11, modulo 11, the highest number would be 10 and the lowest would be 0. So how can we apply this modulo then on the number line? Let's go back to our example. 5 is congruent to 2 mod 3. Now we start with 0. In modulo 3, this will be equivalent to 0. And then we have 1. This is also equivalent to 1. We have 2. This is now equivalent to 2. For 3, we now go back to the value of 0. For 4, it's 1. And then for 5, it's 2. So at this time, 5 and 2 are now congruent because they both have a value of 2 under modulo 3. So we can extend this definition of modulo 3 on the number line. And we can now tell that 5 is congruent to negative 1 under modulo 3 because they both have a value of 2. We can also say that 5 is congruent to negative 7 under modulo 3 because they both have a value of 2. Now on the second example, we have modulo 4. This is 13 congruent to negative 7. And on the number line, 13 is located here and 7 is located here. But if we have modulo 4, 13 and 7 becomes congruent because they have the same value of 1. Let's take a closer look on this modulo values. In modular arithmetic, these are what we call residue classes, or in simple term, we call it the remainder. Any number divided by 2, the remainder is always 0 or 1. Any number divided by 3, the remainder is always 0, 1, or 2. Same with modulo 4 and other modulo numbers. These sets of values are what we call the residue classes. So in modular arithmetic, any integer a divided by m has this residue classes between 0 and m minus 1. Before we go to the examples, let's take a close look at the properties of congruence. The first property, if a is congruent to b mod m and c congruent to d mod m, then the sum of a and c is now congruent to the sum of b and d. Here is an example. Now for property number 2, if A is congruent to B mod M and C is congruent to D mod M, then we can take the product of A and C. This is now congruent to the product of B and D modulo M. And here is its example. The third property, if A is congruent to B mod M and C is congruent to D mod M, then 
we can have these properties. The first one, we can raise both A and B by a power K. The second one is the same as the first property, but this time this is difference. The third one is the property of constant. We can multiply constant C on A and B. And the fourth one is the combination of property number one and two. So let's go to the examples. We have example number one. Suppose it is five o'clock now. What time will it be exactly 1,000 hours now? So this is a problem about the clock. The time is five o'clock. Now, if we rotate this for 12 hours, it will end on the same time of five o'clock. So by long method, you can keep on subtracting 12 until you end up with the remainder after 1,000 hours. Now, this is from 0 to 11, meaning this is under modulo 12 in modular arithmetic. This is the same as 1,000 is congruent to B. B now is the residue or the remainder, and then modular 12. So to start with this, I can start with a basic number as a factor of 1,000. That would be 25. If I have 25 hours divided by 12, that is 2 remainder 1. Now after this, I can now use the constant property of congruence. I'll multiply 40 to come up with a value of 1,000. The result now is 1,000 congruent to 40 modulo 12. However, 40 is not under the residue class of modulo 12. So we can restate 40 as 36 plus 4, and 36 is exactly divisible by 12. We now end up with a remainder of 4. So after 1,000 hours from 5 o'clock, your time now would be 5 o'clock plus 4. That would be 9 o'clock. Let's proceed to example number 2. What is the remainder when 2022 raised to 2022 is divided by 2021? We have 2022 raised to 2022 is now congruent to B. This is now the residue or the remainder, modulo 2021. I can start with the basic structure as 2002 congruent to 1 because when 2002 is divided by 2021, the remainder is 1. Now I could use the power property of congruence. We can now multiply k value, and the k value we choose is definitely the exponent, which is 2022. So I have 2022 as powers on both congruence, and one raised to this exponent is always 1. So therefore, your remainder b is equal to 1. Example number 3. What is the remainder when 16 raised to 53 is divided by 7? So let's write your solution. 16 raised to 53 is congruent to B modulo 7. I can start with my base as 16 because 16 when divided by 7 has a remainder of 2. And then from this congruence, I can work it out to come up with 16 raised to 53. I notice that when I raise 2 to the power of 3, this is equivalent to 8, and when 8 is divided by 7, it has a remainder of 1. My plan now is to multiply something to 16 raised to 3 to come up with 58. So say, for example, I have 16 raised to 3, then raise this by, let's say, 15. This is 45. But if I make use of 16, 3 raised to 16, this is 48. If I choose the power of 17, so 51, even closer to 53. If I make use of the power of 18, this will be 54. So this won't work because it exceeds uh, 53. However, 17 is the closest one because I can end up with a power of 51. So if I do that, I have 16 raised to 51 is congruent to 1. Now I only need a power of 2 to complete my power of 53. So using the property number 2, I can write it in this manner. 16 was originally congruent to 2. That's why you have 16 here and you have 2 here. And when you raise 16 by 2, you also raise 2 by the power of 2. So when this value is divided by 7, its remainder is 1. And when this value is divided by 7, its remainder is 2 raised to 4. 
Therefore, my final answer is 4. Example number 4. What is the remainder when 3 raised to 181 is divided by 17? Let's write our solution in this manner. Now, I need to start with the smallest number when it can be divided by 17. So if I have 3 raised to 3, this would be 27. If 27 is divided by 17, it has a remainder of 10. Let me try 3 raised to 4. This is 81. And if 81 is divided by 17, this would end with 4 remainder 13. Between a remainder of 10 and 13, I can choose 10. But I wanted a smaller number to manipulate. So I can make use of a remainder of negative 7. So instead of having a remainder of 10, you can say that when you divide 27 by 17, you end up with a remainder of 7. Because 10 is simply short by 7 to complete 17. The same with this idea of 13, you can have a remainder of negative 4. So this simply means that 13 is short by 4 to complete 17 as your divisor. So between 10, negative 7, 13, and negative 4, my smallest number that I would like to work with is negative 4. So I'm going to choose 3 raised to 4. And if 3 raised to 4 is divided by 17, you have a remainder of negative 4. Again, the original value of negative 4, you just combine it to 17. That would be 13. So 17 minus 4 is 13. So this time, since this is negative 4, if I raise this by the power of 2, I will end up with 16. And if 16 is divided by 17, this is 0 remainder 16 or 0 remainder negative 1. Again, 16 is just one short to complete the value of 17. So I would happily use negative 1 rather than 16 because 16 is such a big number to work with. So the idea here is to raise 3 raised to 8 to a power to reach this power of 181. So if I have here 8, I raise this to the power of 20, this would be 160. It's, it's close to 181. But if I add this to 21, I have 168. 8 times 22, I have 176. 8 times 23, this would be 184. Now, 184 already exceeds 181, so I can't use 23. The closest power that I could use is 22. So 3 raised to 8 now would be raised to the power of 22. And the negative 1 would also be raised to the power of 22. So I already have a power of 176. It only needs 5 to complete 181. So I have 176 here. I have 3 raised to 4. I just add again a value of 3 raised to 1 to complete 181. So I'll be using property number 2. This is now 3 raised to 8 raised to the power of 22. And 3 raised to 8 has a remainder of negative 1. And both are raised to 22. Then I have a 3 raised to 4. 3 raised to 4 has a remainder of negative 4 when divided by 17. Then I have a 3 here. When divided by 17, the remainder is also 3. So if I simplify this, I end up with negative 12. So this is positive 1. Negative 4 times 3 is negative 12. So to have the positive remainder, just combine 17 and negative 12, and you end up with 5. So 5 now is the remainder when 3 raised to 181 is divided by 17. So we can write b is equal to 5. And the last example, show that 47 divides 2 raised to 23 minus 1. In modular arithmetic or in congruence, so you can write it in this manner, 2 raised to 23 is now congruent to 1 modular 47. To show this, we just need to go with the same process, and in the end, we should achieve a remainder of 1. So let me use my smallest number again. We have 2, but 2 is less than 47, so if we raise this by, say, 5, 2 raised to 5 is 32. Still, it's smaller than 47. So if I have 2 raised to 6, 
this would be 64 oh this time we can divide it by 47 and 64 divided by 47 is equivalent to 1 remainder 17 so I can work with this 2 raised to 6 is now congruent to 17 mod 47 I notice that my exponent is just 23 so I can raise this by the power of 2 applying now the power property of congruence and if we have 17 raised squared divided by 47 this is equivalent to 6 remainder 7 and I can write it in this manner so I have 2 raised to 12 and my remainder now is 7 when it's divided by 47 so notice I have 23 so I already have 6 I have 12 and this is 18 so I just need to add 5 to complete my exponent of 23 so meaning I can use this again 2 raised to 5 is now congruent to 32 mod 47 and then apply now property number 2 2 raised to 6 2 raised to 12 and then 2 raised to 5 and then we have 17 7 and then 32 simplify both sides of the congruence and you have 3808 when 3808 is divided by 47 you end up with a value of 81 remainder 1 so 2 raised to 23 is now congruent to 1 modulo 47. You can now write this back to its original form so that you can say that in your conclusion, 47 divides 2 raised to 3 minus 1. So congratulations for reaching this point. This is now the end of my example. And in the next slide, you now work with your exercises for modulo arithmetic. If this video was helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.